So here we're going to discuss reaction of aldehydes and ketones with organometallic reagents. And this is covered in the aldehydes and ketones, nucleophilic addition and alpha substitution reactions chapter. The first thing we're going to consider is the reaction mechanism and reaction of an aldehyde or a ketone with an organometallic reagent forms an alcohol. And we can form a range of alcohols, primary, secondary or tertiary alcohols from this process. So let's have a look at the key reaction mechanism. And here we have an organometallic reagent reacting with a ketone. And you'll notice that this is the nucleophilic site in the organometallic reagent, this carbon metal bond. The electrons move towards the electrophilic carbon atom in the carbonyl, and we then push electron density onto the electronegative oxygen. This forms an alkoxide ion intermediate, which in a second step on protonation on workup, forms the alcohol. This is a classic nucleophilic addition reaction mechanism. Because we're starting with a ketone, the reaction leads to the formation of this tertiary alcohol, and this is the new carbon-carbon bond that we've formed. But we could, of course, use methanol or other aldehydes in this reaction to form other types of alcohols. So we'll now move on and look at different examples of organometallic reagents that we can use. And in this example, we're using an alkanyl sodium salt as our nucleophile. The negative charge here is directly on the carbon atom in the carbon-carbon triple bond. And we're going to react that with methanol. And following protonation, following our classic nucleophilic addition mechanism, we form this primary alcohol here. And this is the carbon-carbon bond that we've formed. We now change our organometallic to an organolithium compound. And here we have allyl lithium. Similarly, we can react the allyl lithium with, in this case, benzaldehyde. We get nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl group, and after protonation, we form a secondary alcohol. And finally, we can use a Grignard reagent. Here we have phenyl magnesium bromide, and we're reacting it here with a ketone. After protonation, we form a tertiary alcohol, and there's the new carbon carbon bond that we've formed. So we can use a range of different organometallic reagents in these reactions, alkanyl sodium salts, organolithiums, Grignard reagents. We can also use a range of carbonyls, methanol, a range of aldehydes, a range of ketones, and this gives rise to a variety of different alcohols. And that's why this reaction is so useful in synthesis. So we'll now move on now and look at a chemoselective transformation. And in this example, we have a starting material that contains two different carbonyl functional groups. We have an aldehyde and we have a carbamate functional group. And on reaction with methyl lithium, you'll notice that we only get reaction at the aldehyde group, not the carbamate. So the methyl lithium will react with the aldehyde group and after protonation of the oxygen, we form this alcohol derived from nucleophilic addition. And there's the methyl group that's been introduced here. We get a similar result with a different organometallic, this time butyl magnesium bromide. Again, we get reactions solely at the aldehyde carbonyl. After protonation, we form this alcohol here. And here's the new butyl side chain. Because we've got reactions solely at the aldehyde and not the carbamate, this is described as a chemoselective transformation. We can explain the chemoselectivity on the relative electrophilicity of the carbon atoms in the two different carbonyls. This aldehyde carbon is much more electrophilic than this one here. And the reason for that is that in a carbamate, we have oxygen and nitrogen atoms which can donate electron density towards the carbonyl group, which reduces the electrophilicity of the carbon atom. Let's move on now and have a look at some regioselective and stereoselective transformations. And we're going to concentrate here on enones. And interestingly, for an enone, we can draw a resonance structure, as shown here, and we can take electron density from the CC double bond, and we can push it onto the oxygen atom. And in this resonance form, you can see we have the carbon atom at this position bearing a positive charge. So this is an electrophilic site of an enone. And what this then leads to is the fact that a nucleophile has a choice of two different sites of attack in an enone. 
It could react directly at the carbonyl group, which is what we've seen earlier, and this would be described as a 1-2 addition. But alternatively, a nucleophile could attack at the 4 position of the enone, and this is described as 1-4 addition, or sometimes Michael addition, or conjugate addition. So we have these two different choices of positions for attack. Let's have a look at this particular example where we've got a starting material that bears this enone functional group. And we're looking at reaction of that enone with vinyl lithium, this reagent here. And you'll notice that the vinyl lithium attacks directly at the CO double bond. So we get 1 2 addition. We don't get any attack at the 1 4 position. On a 1 2 addition, we can take our electrons onto the carbon and then onto the oxygen. Following protonation, we form this alcohol here, this tertiary alcohol. So this is described as a regioselective addition reaction because the organometallic attacks at the 2 position and not the 4 position. Interestingly, we've also got a stereoselective transformation. This alcohol here is bonded to a chiral carbon. And you'll notice that we've drawn the stereochemistry such that the vinyl group is pointing away from us and the alcohol group is pointing towards us. So in the reaction, the vinyl lithium adds to the less hindered bottom face of the ketone. We only form one isomer from this reaction, in this case one diastereoisomer, and as a consequence of this, this is a stereoselective nucleophilic addition. We'll now look finally at some further chemoselective and stereoselective reactions, this time using Grignard reagents. And in the first example, we're going to look at reaction of phenyl magnesium bromide with this starting material here. We've got two different functional groups of interest in this starting material, both with carbonyl groups. We have a carbamate here, and we have an aldehyde here. From what we've seen earlier on, we would expect the phenyl magnesium bromide to react selectively at the aldehyde carbonyl, not the carbamate, to form an alcohol. And that indeed happens. The phenyl magnesium bromide attacks this carbonyl, we push the electrons onto the oxygen, then on protonation we form this alcohol group here. If you look at the starting material, you'll see that we've got a chiral centre at this position. And then when we do the nucleophilic addition, you can see that we form a second chiral center in the product here. So what we're forming from this reaction are diastereoisomers. This chiral center is maintained in all of the products here, these two products, but we form a new chiral center at this position um, resulting from nucleophilic addition, and we have a choice. The phenyl group could approach the aldehyde from the bottom face, or from the top face, and we arrive at these two diastereoisomers. You'll see that they're not formed in equal amounts. This particular diastereoisomer is formed predominantly, so this is an example of a stereoselective transformation. Finally, we're going to look at reaction of phenyl magnesium bromide with this compound here, which contains a variety of different carbonyls. We've got two different esters, We've got this amide carbonyl, and finally we've got the ketone carbonyl. And it's the ketone carbonyl which is the most reactive of all these carbonyls to nucleophiles. So the phenyl magnesium bromide will add to the ketone carbonyl, push electron density onto the oxygen, and then on protonation we form this tertiary alcohol here. So this again is an example of a chemoselective transformation. It's also a stereoselective transformation because we form a new chiral center in the product, the phenyl group only approaches the carbonyl from the bottom face, hence we form this bond pointing away from us, the alcohol is on the top face, we get a single isomer, or a single diastereoisomer from this reaction, and so this again is a stereoselective transformation.